Good morning, everyone. My name is Sandeep, and I'm the co-founder of Code Tigers. Uh, today, well, we are welcoming you to the eighth episode of the Code Tigers live show, something which started a couple of months ago. And we've, across the last eight weeks, we've featured a new young coder along with a slightly older guest every week from uh, either technology or from other fields of the industry. Uh, today is also another special day for us because we are going to try a very different kind of an activity uh, than the normal activities that all of you are familiar with. So before we introduce the activity to you, uh, let me bring on screen the guest for today. Uh, hi, Sadeep. How are you doing this morning? Excellent. <clears throat> Glad to be on the show. Thank you so much for thank you so much for sharing your Sunday morning with us. Absolutely, my pleasure. All right. So, uh, for all of us, uh, all of you uh, who are joining in, uh, just to give you a little bit about uh, Sudeep. Sudeep is currently the product manager at Symphony Azima AI, where he is building AI and big data products for industrial applications. Uh, and uh, before that, uh, he's been working on technologies around. Uh, industrial intelligence, robotics, IoT, and prosthetics. He has a background in uh, mechanical and civil engineering with a focus on optimization, controls, AI, and machine learning. And uh, he is one uh, person who started coding at a very early age. Uh, when he was in fifth grade, Sudeep started coding back then. And uh, he still loves to do that. Even in his current role, he likes to code whether in the office or outside office. Uh, academically, Sudeep is a BS and MS in mechanical engineering from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. And before his current role at Symphony, he was a field director at Bump and Systems Engineer in, based out of Chicago, USA. And he also was a data scientist with General Electric, Bangalore. So, Sudeep, please tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, I'm sure. I think you covered a lot of it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I did start coding at a young age. I was lucky enough to be uh, in, a, in a school that, uh, you know, had a, a computer science type class at uh, for young, young kids. And so I started off uh, there and I really loved it. I just loved, you know, the logic part of it. And uh, just it was it was fun uh, to to build these things. Uh, you know, at that time we didn't have nice visual uh, coding languages; uh, they didn't exist. So we did do text-based uh, uh, languages, but uh, it was still fun. And uh, I think that sort of led me on the path of doing uh, doing things like that. So in college, even though I was doing uh, mechanical engineering. Uh, and you know, going into sort of controls and optimization, just for fun, just for as an elective, I took uh, you know a mechatronics class, a robotics class, and I loved it so much uh, that I took another one, and that basically led me to do internships in that area, and then I eventually decided to do a master's in a related field of you know uh, artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning. So. Uh, that's that's when it all started. Then, as you said, uh, you know, I worked on industrial intelligence type uh, um, problems uh, where we weren't doing uh, AI, but we were doing more like IoT uh, related um, uh, systems we we're building and just making it easier for um, you know people to do their jobs in in industry. Uh, and so yeah, so that's that's how the the progressed and. Uh, now I'm I'm doing more of the same stuff, uh, just maybe uh, the next iteration in you know our technological sort of timeline where we have come into the realm of big data, artificial intelligence, uh, things like that. Wow, that's quite a lot of stuff that you've uh, been doing for, over the last few years, and uh, it's quite interesting to see that you've uh, you liked a particular class and then you. Took it upon yourself to take a course in that particular subject, uh, and then then that here you are, uh, you yeah. know, building industrial applications around AI. Uh, a lot of stuff to talk about during the show. I'm sure we would yeah. love to hear more from you. 
and discuss uh, and you know if you could share the knowledge that you have with the younger kids who are very eager to know about stuff uh, uh, that, that you've been working on. So uh, talking about younger kids, uh, let me introduce the guest, the young coder for today. Uh, so our young coder for today is Akarsh Agarwal. He is a student of class nine, Delhi International School. And Akarsh has been learning code for the last uh, few years, I think. And he's been uh, learning, he's currently learning Python to be. Uh, so, uh, he he's a very passionate coder. Gets very happy when his code works, and gets a little flustered when his his code doesn't sometimes work. But yeah, he's he's a he's a great kid to have in the class, and uh, keeps everyone very happy. So today, uh, our first Python session or uh, hour of code around Python, uh, we we wanted to invite Akarsh to showcase something where. Uh, the rest of the kids can start learning this wonderful language, which all of us feel that uh, is possibly the future. Uh, hey, Akash, how are you doing this morning? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. So for all of you, I am Akash, a student of class ninth, and I'm doing really great. And today I'm going to uh, take you through today's R of code, which is a Python activity. Great, Akash. So what is the activity that you've planned for us? So the activity that I've planned for you all is a wonderful activity. That is a rock, paper, scissor game on Python. So uh, okay. around that activity, we are going to create a game using the Python computer language, which is a really wonderful language. And in that, we are going to write a code and make our code work as a game we all have played rock paper scissors in which there are three choices either rock paper scissors and one of them defeats either of this okay uh, akash i think we're missing a little bit of you uh, whatever you're saying but uh, i i think we get a gist of what you're trying to say that you're making a rock paper scissors game uh, yeah so uh, if I remember correctly, a rock, paper, scissors game is something that uh, kids love to play. Uh, I don't remember playing it back, back when I was young, but yeah, it's I think quite popular with the kids these days. <laughs> is that correct, Rakesh? Yes, sir. Sudeep, uh, have you played this game called rock, paper, scissors? Yeah, yeah, we used to. Uh... Yeah, and I used to think I was, I was really good at it, uh, even though okay. it's complete chance. I used to think I was really good at it, but uh, it's 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 fun. It's a fun place. Uh, we you know when sometimes we'd be making uh, teams when we're playing football or cricket, uh, we would use rock paper mm -hmm. scissors to sort of choose captains or or you know split people up. So we also used to do that. Yeah, yeah. So looking forward to it, Akash. So do you want to start immediately? Yes, sir. Why not? I'm very excited for sure, that. Sure, Akash. So, yeah. Great. We are also very excited. So let's let's start with you sharing your screen. OK. So all the people who tuned in, uh, before we uh, start with the actual activity, uh, all the people who tuned in, uh, you can either code along with us, with Akash, uh, while he takes you through this activity. In addition to that, uh, otherwise, in case you find it uh, a little fast paced, in case you want, you can always check out a recorded session of this uh, this stream, which will be available on our Facebook page. Uh, this is the link to our Facebook page and also our YouTube channel, which is on the bottom of your screen now. So you can check out these links later on. And you can check. Uh, do this activity at a later stage as well. OK, Akash. So I can see a blank screen. Uh, mm -hmm. You're using a Google Chrome browser, Akash? Yes, sir. We will be using Google Chrome browser at, okay. as it works best with our editor. So first of all, we all will have to open a new tab on Google Chrome browser. And then 
we will have to type trinket.io p r i n k e t dot i o and hit enter so this will take us to the home page of trinket so for all the viewers this is the website uh, that akash is using trinket.io the link is on your screen uh, so for people who know a little bit about text based languages python is a text based language and in order for you to code in a text based language we normally use a code editor and there are a lot of different types of code editors uh, some of them you have to download what akash is using today is a web based trink uh, web based code editor uh, and he is using this website called trinket.io which is a very easy to use platform uh, it's it can be used from any browser uh, it can also be used from a mobile device and anyone can log in and the code can be code stays inside your login uh, you can share it easily with your friends you can always uh, simply share and click on a link and you can share that link with anyone and they have access to your code that you get so we're using trinket.io for today's session yes akash please go ahead okay so firstly we'll going to click in the top log in button so we get this page so now okay. here i am going to sign in with google with just one click i am going to get my dashboard and that is the easiest way so i have logged in here so now i'll be clicking this button new trinket and hit python okay so there is our dashboard so now we are going to code in this so firstly for every a good program must have a good title so i am going to name it my first python okay and then we'll start so the first line of code that we are going to write is can you uh, can you possibly increase the font size a little bit i'm not sure if uh, everyone will be able to see it properly yeah. yes sir sure and can you also uh, tell us a little bit about the two different there are two different uh, parts to this screen that i'm looking at okay so sir this is our workspace where we code okay where i can write my lines of code my piece of code okay. and this is mm -hmm. the actual place where our code will work so in a, in in simple words on the left hand side is your input on the right is where your your code will give out the output yes okay okay so deep does this look similar to the some of the other editors that you uh, uh, and some of the other professional uh, coders use like pycharm and some of the other platform that you might be familiar with yeah it's it's not too different i mean everything in the text based language is based on some uh, text editor right uh, so you can use notepad as well right if you want yeah uh, so it has to be similar but i think this is very convenient for someone trying to do some types of prototypes or when they're learning things so they don't have to yeah. get bogged down by you know having to download something and having to set up an environment and all that uh, so i think this is uh, these types of things are great yeah so sort of maybe for an absolute beginner this probably is a good platform to kind of start and then we can of course move on Yeah, one of the things when we were young, we had to use the normal way to do it. So just setting up that environment sometimes was difficult. So okay. a lot of people discouraged. Uh, so I think this oh. sort of uh, you know helps with that. Doesn't bog you down in the in the early stages. Right. All right, Akash. So uh, let's look to start writing this. like uh, this first okay. program of yours so first we'll write name is equals input so here 
firstly we are talking about variable so in computer language variable is a thing that stores a particular uh, value that we don't uh, can't really display over there because it may be very large difficult to handle so that's why we can use a variable so here we name our variable as name and input that means this will ask a user input so here i'm going to write print this is the most famous command of python the print command and it is almost yeah. used in every python program so okay. we write it in double quotes which is the correct syntax for this and and then if okay. we are writing a, for a variable then we write it without quotes so let's see if this works okay. or not so it asked me what is your name okay i'll write my name yes it's okay, working so welcome akash perfect it's working okay so now so whatever i write in the whatever i write in the quotation marks uh, that gets printed as it is and then i can pull out the variable uh, separated by a comma yes right sir. Okay, mm -hmm. so if I were to change this, run this again with a different name, that name will uh, automatically change after the text welcome, right? Yes, sir. Sure, we can even try that. Yeah. This works. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now, so to keep it very <coughs> organized, I am gonna add these dashes so that it. keeps my workspace really organized and separates it with the other line of code and now i am going to start with importing a module so a module is basically a categorization of various python uh, pro, like packets kind of thing that give us different functions and for a wide various interactive functions to our python program so okay. here i am using a random module random module gives us anything that we want randomly chosen so from random we'll import rand int so rand int means random integer that means random number okay so okay. this module would allow you to import this function uh, or bring out in uh, random integers into your program yes okay so now i'm just going to add an empty space here make it also nice and give two spaces so now the first we am um, i will use hashes to just name it so that it keeps really organized so here okay. creating a list of play options so this when we add a hash to every line so that line of code doesn't appear on our screen it doesn't as in work okay so here we'll name this variable as p and now we'll place the square brackets because this is a data so that's why we'll place it in square brackets and then name our data so here rock paper mm -hmm. and scissors so this will be the play options that will be allowed rock paper and scissors mm -hmm. so now as we are playing against a computer so what we'll do we'll assign a random play to the computers because if we will not do that every time the computer will win Okay, so here we'll write computer equals p. So now we are choosing this random input from this line of code that is t, because those are our only play options. And now here we'll write random zero and two. So why I am writing as I told earlier, random integer. and now in this curly brackets 0 and 2 so now computer will choose at any time i'll run this code 
any random integer from 0 to 2. And why does it have to be 0 to 2? Uh, there are three uh, variables in that list that you've created. So why does it have mm -hmm. to be 0 to 2? It has to be 0 to 2 because in Python language, we start from 0, not, uh, not 1. So okay. three variables will be 0, 1, and 2. OK, so uh, in Python, the first position is always 0 instead of 1. In some of the other programming languages, the first position is one. Like, for example, in Scratch, the num first position is one. But in Python, you're saying the first position is zero. And then the second position would be one. And the last position would be two. Although there yes. are three, three variables, but it would start from zero and it would end at two. That's at the reason two. you chose it, zero to two. And perfect. Okay. So the next we'll write set player to false so we need to set player to false so that it is a fair play and our okay. code works in a loop so a loop basically keeps running the code so that it is really fun and we don't have to run it again and again from there so okay. here we'll do player is equals false we'll write false this false turns into purple as it is a boolean expression and remember the false f has to be capital then only, okay. then only the python would detect as but, a boolean expression okay so for all of us who may be doing this for the first time do you know what is a boolean yes yeah so boolean is basically true or false it is a like it is used boolean expressions are a set of statements that are, that can be either true or false okay so a boolean would only have to have two answers either a true or a false yes sir perfect okay so now i'll start with the loop so as i told a loop is a basic uh, in basic English also, it is a term that it keeps repeating it again and again. So here also, we'll be using loops. So I'm going to write while player is equal is equal. So now here we are going to add two is equal marks. Mm -hmm. And then false because we have uh, set player to false above and add okay. a colon to it and hit enter. So now for all the viewers here, the indentation will be below this I. So this is the computer and the Python auto indents it according to the loop. So we don't need to change it by pressing delete. So we just need to follow this indentation itself. So now, and basically by, by indentation, uh, it means that whatever line of code comes after the line number 17, where the wide loop is being created, the, the indentation applies to those lines. Basically, the while loop will apply to those lines and not the yes. lines which are not indented. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So now we will set our player to true once again, because that was out of the loop. So that is why we had to set it to false. Now it is inside the loop. So now we set it to true and hit enter. And we're going to write player is equals input comma marks talk paper scissors. So in the I have a I have a question from someone. Uh, I'm going to put it up on the screen. Uh, why is two equal to signs R code for Y statement? Uh, I think you you mentioned that, but can you just repeat it for the benefit of uh, the this viewer? Okay, sure. So why have you used two equal to signs? So Instead here I have used two equal to signs because this is a loop. One equal to signs means we are defining a basic number 
as in i can uh, write here 1 is equals to 2 so this is a basic number and while we are in a uh, writing in a loop so here we are mentioning that if player while the player is equals to false so that is why we have added 2 is equal to marks so uh, just to uh, kind of add on to that when you are using a single equal to that is uh, a single equal to sign is used to make variables uh, and when you use two equal to sign that's a that's the syntax when you're using when you're making boolean expressions so i i hope we're going on the right track sudeep you you feel free to correct us whenever we go wrong because you're the expert on all of this <laughs> yeah so i mean i think what you guys said is right so one easy way to remember this is that when you have a single equal to sign whatever is on the right side of that single equal to sign gets assigned as the value of the left hand side variable so where you did player equals false now what has happened is player the value of player is now a false right but when you do two equal to signs it's actually right. just a comparison so what you're saying you're asking the question while so when you say player equal equals false the answer to that question is is player equal to false that's the question and the answer is yes because in the previous line of code you just set it to false so you can think of double equal to as comparison mm -hmm. and single equal to as assignment okay. which means you're assigning a value to a variable so that's one way to remember that very very nice report somebody has also asked can we use other software for python uh if you're asking about different kind of uh, code editors yes you definitely can use a lot of other there are multiple code editors uh for python we're just using something which is very simple to use mm -hmm. Okay, Akash. Please, see. please move. Oh. Okay. So here we have asked the player for a input. As uh, we play the game, so we ask rock, paper, or scissors. We do like rock, paper, or scissors. So here also we are asking the player for its input. That what do you want? Rock, paper, or scissors? So that is why we have wrote it in a input command. And now we'll use the if statement. So if statement is a conditional that basically means like if player is equals to true or something like that so those are conditionals like while the player is set to false that is a loop but if where we use a if statement that is a conditional so if player is equals to computer so now you are actually okay. coding the uh, conditions where when one of the player let's say the computer gets a rock and the other one gets a scissor what would be the result sir right? in this current line of code at 20 we are coding it for a tie we can also have a tie yeah, if no. both of the players yeah have so rock. yeah but so i'm just no i i get that the only thing is that for the people who are doing it uh, we just we have we have now started to code the actual conditions the act, all those different scenarios that we will encounter why will we yes. while playing this game yes so that so is what the if statement is there for yes. okay okay so here we have a loop inside more statements so this is a nested loop so now here we have written if player so if player's command is equals to the computer's command if it is the same so we'll print it's a tie okay so if uh, if me and akash we both get rock that means it's a tie yes okay and now from this line we have to hit a backspace just one time and indent it to this if statement okay here and right l if this is another part of the com uh, conditionals so l if player equals rock so now we are coding the actual scenarios 
so now here if player takes out rock okay so rock uh, would be in the double quotes here and here itself if computer is equals paper mm -hmm. so in the general game what happens if one player has rock and the other has paper so the paper wins as it catches the rock okay so, so here, it kind of covers the uh, covers the rock yes sir it okay. covers the rock so we will write print do lose here do lose and computer because we know that the computer would be winning here computer which is the paper yes but we uh, we are uh, taking it as a variable here that mm -hmm. variable computer and then covers again is a string and then player again is a variable okay so i think this should work and then we'll hit enter and now we'll again indent it so now this time we'll again indent it to the uh, same statement that is that uh, if statement so let me do that else so else is basically if like if and else statement so else okay print the other wins so that is basically the other side of the scenario you win because if like the inputs are turned off the computer plays with the rock and we play with the paper so we will win so here you win player player smashes computer now we are going to try and run this code to see if it works by choosing a rock so here i'm going to enter my name so now here it asks me rock paper or scissors so as i have coded for only rock right now so i'll mm -hmm. choose a rock okay so we can see the results i lose paper covers rock so the computer so chose now, paper yes okay we can try and it it's also important it's, a, it's also important uh, you might want to specify that it's important to write the complete spelling of whatever you're choosing uh, yes because here are uh, play options complete like it is a word rock in lower case letters that is why yeah okay again i lost <laughs> that's okay okay so now i'm going to code it for the other options too so now again we'll use a elif command the one we used at the top so we are going to use it again so now we are mm -hmm. going to be, please remember that we will have to indent it to the earlier one where we have written elif player is equals to rock because it is basically the same loop that is going on so now we will uh, what will we choose to player okay, let's assume paper so if the player chooses paper computer so now what will lose from the paper of course scissors so now there scissors will be there and hit enter so if somebody has asked a question can we replace or simply write r p or s instead of rock paper scissors would that work yes sure it would work we just we will just have to change the play options here in the line number 
the variable t we will have to change it to r p and s yeah. this list that you've created it needs to the values there need to be changed yes okay so, so why now do you just let me ask sudeep uh, sudeep uh, do you remember your first program that you created when you were in fifth grade yeah yeah uh, i believe it was a calculator program uh, oh, you could put in you could put in numbers and you could put in a sign like add or minus or multiply divide and it would do that and give you a result oh and what was the language you were using back then which language did uh, you code uh q basic oh okay so it was popular even back then because we still have q basic being taught in schools in yeah yeah schools. so i think it, it's a nice first language to learn uh it it's a uh, very simple word like or like language like uh, syntax mm -hmm. and uh, yeah but now you have things like python that are more powerful and probably even even more like a human language so i think oh. nowadays you can use python as well yeah okay so uh do you think python is a good language to start with or do you think somebody should start with uh, learning maybe something else before even starting python how does a typical uh, child approach if there is somebody who wants to learn programming what is the general uh, approach that they would take you probably been to two different countries uh, professionally you've seen uh, a lot of places so what is the general suggestion from you yeah so i think it it depends on the age of the of the child uh, when they start learning so mm -hmm. there are you know cases uh, where kids actually start learning very young even before they can really write words and you know text they can start coding with uh, sort of visual languages and i know that you know one of my colleagues uh, his son i think is four and he might be listening right now so he apparently does uh, some uh, visual block based uh, programming right so that really teaches them the the foundations of logic and how a computer works in the back end uh, and so i sort of liken it to you know when you start learning how to ride a cycle you may have training wheels uh, you know in the beginning slowly you'll take off one training wheel and then you can start doing only two two wheels and then maybe you graduate to a like a gearless scooty or something like that right and then you can go on to a motorcycle so it's similar and so i think uh, the visual based languages are great for younger kids and then when uh, children become um, sort of proficient with uh, words typing uh, reading and all of those things i think a language like python is is great cuz it sort of brings them to that next level uh, and then i think there's obviously more to learn uh, as you become a more experienced coder you sort of have to start learning the uh, you know uh, the concepts behind these things how they actually work uh, at a lower level uh, mm -hmm. and so Python is generally, uh, you know, it sort of abstracts out a lot of things. It makes it very much like human language. So there's good and bad things about that. The good thing is you can easily write these things, but the bad thing is that um, you know it's it's so simple looking that not everyone who learns Python will immediately grasp the underlying uh, you know complexity that's there in in a computer. and so some other languages you can learn to uh, sort of learn those types of things so c is a very good one that they teach in like early uh, high school and college to really mm -hmm. get you familiar with some more advanced uh, uh, concepts um, that will actually make your even your python code uh, more resilient more robust so i think it's like a it's a it, it's a ramp that you have to you have to slowly climb okay and i i think uh, sudeep uh, uh, a lot of countries have started uh, introducing code or programming with visual languages these days including uh, in, uh, in india cbsc is recommended that you should start with a visual block based programming language where you put blocks drag and drop blocks in a certain sequence and then you uh, 
move to a text based language so in uh, your opinion is that a good approach to go go for yeah i think so i think it it uh, very uh, nicely very simply explains to um, to a learner um, you know what a computer is all about how does a computer work the way it does right and so i think those are the foundational blocks right if you understand that you can write some logic in a way that a computer understands and as you add more and more logic you can build these more complex systems uh, i think that's that's just a great place to start everything else after that is you know graduating to a python for example is just um, you know a, a higher level of uh, flexibility that you get right uh, so you, with your text you have more more flexibility you can you know write whatever you want in blocks maybe there's a little bit less flexibility but that's really uh, the flexibility is required later on so as you're learning as a as a beginner i think the block based stuff is great because it teaches you the foundations of that of how a computer works and that is what is going to really help you uh uh you know progress in your in your programming uh repertoire okay so uh just to kind of summarize that uh, you you would want to start with the block based language and then once the uh foundation of the core concepts of programming uh, are inculcated in the child in anyone who wants to learn programming then it may be better to move on to a text based language to get the true potential or make beautifully truly wonderful programs or code to uh, you know uh, reach out the proper potential of whatever you're trying to achieve because block based languages would have their limitations and only so much that you can do with those languages yeah that's right okay wonderful that I think while we were uh, speaking, uh, Akash finished his different scenarios of uh, the rock paper scissors game. Yes, I did. Akash, are you done with all the scenarios? Yes, Wonderful. I'm done with so all the scenarios. Can we now try? And, yeah. Yeah. There please, is just please, one uh, scenario left. That that is sure. now we will indent this else to the elif one, not to the if statement. to the elephant because you know what this else will do this will ensure whether your inputs are correct or not because if you write a wrong input then it will give error so here we are already telling the computer that if there is a wrong input then what to do so we can write here else that's not a valid option please check your spellings so this is like a fallback option in case anything all the uh, any of the scenarios is not taken into account this can be your fallback this will be this gets printed as the fallback uh, output on the screen is it yes okay cool okay so now we we have already started the loop so when we start a loop we also have to end the loop so close the loop yes so first we'll write uh, because the player was you know set to true this is just a uh, organizing line for the sake of not messing it up so player was set to true but we want it so now we want it to be again false so that the loop will keep on playing it doesn't uh, become really monotonous to again and again run it so we want it to be false so the loop Once. And now, as we said in the above line, we are gonna set the player to false again.
and then again we will write the same line of code computer is equals to and then zero So I guess that will work. So let's try it. I'm very excited. Yeah, me too. Okay. So let's enlarge our result space and we'll run it. So top does your name also have to be lowercase? Akash, does the name spelling of your name also have to be lowercase? No, because it is it a user be. input. It can be anything. It can be even uh, like something like this. Okay. So it doesn't really objects. Okay. So now I'll choose rock. Why do I lose every time? <laughs> <laughs> it's so a now tie. It's a tie. And I'll choose scissors. Again, it's a tie. It would let you win, maybe. So you will okay, find it. <laughs> Excellent. So we can keep playing this in a loop as long as yes. we want, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so Deep, so how did you find the game? Uh, pretty easy to make, I'm sure. For, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and actually reminds me, uh, we used to create games like this when we were kids. Uh, not not rock, paper, scissors, but uh, just different types of games uh, like this, where you would just, uh, you know, make the computer do something and you would try to guess it. Mm -hmm. uh, so very similar. So it really brings back memories. <laughs> I'm sure. Akash, can you also try adding an input which is uh, out of what we've, uh, you know, catered for something which has a spelling error or some other yes, word sir. sure maybe water or anything else okay so here it is asking me for rock paper and scissors and i'll add water so yeah so, it gives out a it prints out that fallback option which uh, we coded for because which akash coded for and then it again gives the same it asks for the same inputs Wonderful. Yes. Now I think I know Akash. You made you you wanted to add a particular twist to this program. Something that you've uh, you did mention. We're looking forward to that added twist that you made. And while you while you show that to us, I wanted to ask you, uh, Sudeep. Uh, you are an expert in AI and uh, machine learning, and you work on applications around industrial applications, in fact. So I wanted to ask you a very simple and basic question. Uh, a lot of people don't know the answer to this, especially younger people in school. What is the difference between AI and machine learning? Sure. So um, AI is kind of a very large umbrella, right? So you can actually define AI as, uh, you know, any any computer program, and this is a sort of a broad definition. Any computer program that makes uh, some sort of decision or shows some sort of intelligence, right? By, by which I mean it it sort of behaves like a human. Right. So back in the day, what used to be called AI was just some very smart logic programmed into the computer, so that anything you do would look like you know, there's some intelligence behind the computer, right? Uh, but then um, machine learning is sort of uh, a branch of AI, as you might you might call it, or maybe a subset of, of AI, where the methods that are used are uh, based on uh, a computer being able to learn through experience. Okay. So for a computer, what is experience? Right. So a computer experiences things through your inputs. So, you know, what you feed into the computer and we call those inputs sort of data. Right. So if any computer program 
can see more and more data and can adjust its own logic and its own ability maybe it gets better over time mm -hmm. as it sees more and more that mm -hmm. is generally called machine learning so there's a different different types of methods within machine learning uh, okay. and since machine learning is sort of under this umbrella of ai you know people okay. tend to use them uh, interchangeably because a lot of the ai that we see today is actually machine learning which is why there's a little bit of confusion confusion so what are some of the common ai applications that may be around us or even machine learning applications which may be around us which we may not even be aware of uh, we may be around us but we we we, we probably be using them in our daily routine so we simply don't know what uh, if, if those are machine learning or ai applications yeah so i mean any time you go on to the internet mm -hmm. you are interacting with something to do with machine learning or ai so just to give you an example um when you go on any website and you see some ads right those yeah. ads are actually tailored to you specifically okay so if you went on the internet and i went on the internet we would see different ads based on what we have been uh, searching for in the, on the internet before so there are trackers on the internet that actually gather data about you and give you the ad that is most relevant to you so that's something okay. a lot of people maybe are not aware of but you know then any any website you go to these days will have machine learning like you know you try to watch a video on netflix or amazon prime or anything like that the recommendations mm -hmm. are based on machine learning so it's based on okay. your history uh you know uh, you go to amazon you try to buy something the recommendations there or even the prices sometimes are catered to the individual which is something a lot of people don't know but in in amazon okay. amazon may automatically change the price based on you know whether uh, to to make the sale so if amazon's oh. algorithm uh, figure out that you are likely to only buy a certain item for 200 rupees not 250 like it usually is it might even be able to change the price so just to sell that item to you so there are all kinds of things now that are sort of hidden uh and you're interacting with ai and machine learning uh, more than you know without even knowing about it without even knowing about it so does it also happen the other way around where amazon might try and upsell something to me without me knowing about it where it thinks that you know this guy maybe able to buy it at a higher price as compared to the regular people that i'm selling it to so why not sell him sell him a little more make make a little more profit out of this fellow yeah i it's it's entirely possible uh, obviously i don't know the amazon algorithms uh, right uh, but it's <laughs> entirely possible with the technology that we have and uh, okay. the way that sort of the business is run so so uh, what is a good age to start learning ai or machine learning for a child in school today uh, if he is curious he or she would want to start focusing on learning ai and machine learning what according to you would be the right uh, age and also what uh, according to you uh, is the future for that child how can they start preparing themselves for the future and what is the perfect age for them to kind of do that sure so i think uh, the concept of a computer learning uh, based on more data i think that becomes uh, pretty natural to even young kids uh, let's say after about 5 years of age they are able to grasp the fact that if uh, a certain let, let's say a certain person right is exposed to some piece of data the next time they will consider that what they saw consider their experience and make a decision mm -hmm. based on that so that i think is very natural to a, a lot of children and you, you can introduce them to those sorts of concepts uh, for sure and you know you will need some you need to build build some tools uh, some visual tools to make those interfaces easy and all of those things but mm -hmm. as uh, a child grows and they start learning a little bit more about uh, you know math mathematics uh, things like statistics uh, uh things like uh, you know regression and things like that i think that's when you can start introducing them 
to a more rigorous uh, sort of uh, the, the the logic behind how these algorithms actually work, and uh, that sort of foundation is 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 required. You know, you have to learn a little bit about matrices and some linear regression, and I think you, you can start that start that journey. But um, conceptually, I think you can start teaching kids even as young as five that a computer can learn through experience. And uh, I think that will will help. And to your second question, the future, um, I mean, I have sort of a long answer to this, uh, but uh, I think the future is that any work that we do is going to be um, a combination or a team of a computer and human. And these okay. teams that have both a computer and a human working together are going to be far superior to uh, just a computer or just a, just a human. So it's important that kids learn uh, how a computer works so that they can leverage it um, for their future. Perfect, perfect. Okay, Akash, I think you, are you ready with showing us your Yes, sir, code? I'm ready with my board. And I've added a surprise element. Yeah, this looks like something very interesting. I see some images. Yes, sir. The, these look images, but these are text. Okay, this is text. Okay. And this is called ASCII. Tell me a little. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. Okay. And this art is called ASCII art. So creating okay. sort of images with ASCII art is uh, like writing uh, various kinds of text on the screen like nowadays we write uh, many things like you know this and this so it makes like an emoji so that all is ASCII art and it is really interesting we can make any image out of ASCII art it is the most interesting thing okay and so I can we try and run this Sure, sure. Yes, sir, sure. So it asked me my name. I'm also curious, Akash, to note the uh, to see if uh, changing the name changes the luck when when we play this yeah. game. Sure. <laughs> Who would want to play? So, Deep, you want to try it with your name? Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then you will have to give me the input. Rock, yes. paper, or scissors. So I will go for paper. Okay. Let's see. Okay, when you lose. I lost. <laughs> so, yeah, right so really nice art there where the bot has scissors. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So, so now the, yeah. the output, instead of having simple uh, answers written in text, you have these wonderful images which. So one of them is, I think the first one is Sudeep and his yeah. hand. That looks like a paper because it's completely straight. And the next one is the board, the computer. And that looks like a scissor, right? Yes. Yeah, perfect. Sudeep, you want to try another? Do you, do you want to try another one? Yeah, I'll, I'll go for paper again. Paper again. Paper is lucky for him. It's oh, a tie. Go let's go another. Again. Let's <laughs> yet again. Let's see. If, let's see if we can win this one. Okay. So, what is the input? Paper. Paper. Again, paper. Yeah. Again, lost. No, paper is not working out for me. <laughs> <laughs> Try again. Paper again. It has to happen, oh, right? Going with paper. paper. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try yeah. something else. Right. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> the very, very nice uh, addition to this whole program. It, the program completely changes by adding this ASCII art. Absolutely. Yeah. Delightful uh, visualization. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Akash. Very nice. Very, very nice element, Akash. I'm sure all the people who are watching this are getting inspired and looking at it. Uh, a question that I have for you, Sudhi, from uh, somebody in the audience. Uh, somebody said, uh, what are the different 
uh, types of applications of python for example uh, is it only used in a certain uh, uh, way or are they, does it have a wide ranging different sets of applications from ai to machine learning or anything else i mean just a question to you yeah yeah so the i mean python is uh, a very flexible text based language so uh, even today i mean python is used for uh, um, you know almost everything uh, these days right so a lot of major websites have a lot of code in python right uh, people in industry use python uh, a lot of data scientists use python because it's so easy to write and uh, it's so quick to uh, you know turn around uh, something uh, and mm -hmm. since python is sort of an open source language there's a huge community out there that are basically okay. writing all kinds of modules right that basically extend the power of python so the random module that akash used today was written by okay. somebody right okay. some someone in the python internet community uh, so mm -hmm. similarly people write all kinds of modules that you can use to do all kinds of different things so there's really no limitation with what you can do with python okay now another question that i have is uh, somebody is asking is is learning code only important for a child if he or she wants to become a computer engineer or learning code is going to help them in anything that they would want to do yeah so i i think it's it's going to become a an essential skill for everyone uh, not just a computer engineer uh, i mean if we have some time i'd like to give a small example that's okay sure. yeah so uh, if you if you go back um, maybe 20 or 30 years um, so you know the game of chess chess is a can get pretty complicated right akash you you played chess before right so the number of positions yes. on on a chess board right is more than the number of atoms in the universe right? so it oh. can be get complex so about 30 years ago uh, right is when so before like 30 years and beyond uh, there were humans that could beat the best computers at chess right but somewhere around 30 years ago uh, 25 30 years ago uh, computers started becoming more powerful so computers are very uh, so nowadays even a simple smartphone a simple chess program on a smartphone will beat the best human players wow. right human players simply cannot cannot beat uh, these chess engines because they are just so good at calculation they just calculate every position to great depths and they they will win right so nowadays there's another form of the game where we have a team of a human and a computer playing together human okay. does what a human is best at which is you know coming up with some creative strategic ideas and a computer is does what it's best at computer says uh, your idea is good or not based on its calculation so these mm -hmm. teams of humans and computers are far superior to any human alive or any computer so they actually are better than a human or a computer by themselves right so this is what is going to happen in every field that we are uh, that, that we work in right whether it is art music science technology economics whatever it is a team of human and computer is going to be uh, far superior and in order for businesses to survive in the future you will have to have these teams uh, do a lot of the work right so it, the future of work is going to be uh, you know for people like akash um, you know as they join the workforce they are going to be expected to know how to work with a computer and not just how to use a program or anything like that but they will have to understand how to build their own programs that can help them become like more of a like a superhuman right oh. uh, not <laughs> you know it's that superhuman computer human team so it's like an extension of yourself and that's what mm. you will have to learn how to build and learn how to use uh, in the future so uh, and it's going to be everywhere it's going to be art it's going to be science it's going to be uh, absolutely everywhere so uh, from what you just said it seems that uh, computer science is already possibly the 
a core competency or a core skill that you would want to start teaching uh, your kids and more more so code or programming to that aspect because uh, it's important to become creators of technology rather than just become users of technology which almost all the kids these days already are yes so it's it's going to become like reading and writing and doing uh, mental maths and all that right that those are we see those as core skills for yeah. anyone graduating yeah. out of school uh, yeah. programming is going to def it probably already has become uh, one of those skills uh, for the future so uh, on that note what would be your uh, suggestion to the uh, parents that are watching this show or the educators who are tuned in what would be your suggestions to those people yeah i think i think introducing uh, children to uh, programming concepts at a young age uh, is is key uh, you know just uh, spending some time uh, maybe even maybe just even one hour a week is 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 enough um, and i think um, we're going to have coding as part of the uh, curriculum in in most countries even in even in our country it's, it uh, is going to quickly become uh you know the uh, is going to become the standard uh, so i think uh, that exposure is is important for uh for being ready for the for the workforce just like you know sports are important art is important academics yeah. is important this has to be one more uh, aspect that or facet uh, that you have to develop in uh, in your in your students yeah in fact i think the national education plan uh, oh, sorry national education policy which was launched by the government of india very recently uh, maybe a few weeks ago it, it talks about uh, introducing code from grade 6 onwards in india in all the schools whether they are government schools or private schools so very exciting development and i think the government is also moving towards teaching kids uh, uh, courses which are focusing on the foundational skills courses which focus on experiential learning like the core skills like problem solving creativity uh, you know working in teams and I, i to a large extent all of these different life skills are incorporated in a child when the child learns something as simple as code because it it is a lot about solving different problems and doing so creatively right like akash yeah. solved a very interesting problem today by making a very simple game and then added a very interesting element creatively we took it to a next level all together by adding those wonderful lasky art feet elements yeah absolutely and the the delight that you get from the lasky art right is is almost not measurable right if some yeah. if you had to sell this game to somebody with or without lasky art makes a huge difference right yeah. in a heartbeat i would want the lasky art for sure so those are the things that humans can really add to these things even though computers are good at certain things uh, humans can really augment and take it to the next level so that's where i think the uh, the, the curriculum should be also focused that well rounded uh, skills as well as how to use your creativity uh, you know as a human um, in this in this world wonderful so that brings us towards the end of the show uh, how was the experience for both of you sudeep and akarsh how did you guys like spending the monday and uh, the sunday morning with us so very interesting for me it was one of the best sunday mornings i've ever had <laughs> that's amazing yeah, and, and absolute pleasure uh, for my side also it was lovely having both of you guys here and i'm sure bo- uh both you and uh, both sudeep and akash both of you uh, have definitely inspired a lot of people who've been with us on the live stream and of course uh, a lot of people who will be watching this stream later on so it's it's a definite uh, inspiration for all the people all the kids who are either akash's age or even younger and who want to learn to code and uh, sudeep having you on the show talk about your experiences was wonderful Uh, so for all the people who are watching us uh, you can go check us out this episode and the previous episodes on our facebook page which is uh, the the link is in the on your screen right now 
You can also follow us on Twitter. This is the Twitter handle. And you can check out this these episodes on the YouTube channel. Feel free to email us. That's our email ID. And uh, in case you would want to join us, uh, in case you feel that you would want to join the show in the future, feel free to reach out on that link. Just click on that link and you'll be able to reach out to us. It's at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we'll be we'll be wrapping up uh, everything now, uh, the, the show now. And it was, again, wonderful having both of you, Sudeep, Akash. Thank you so much for taking out the time to be with us on this uh, wonderful Sunday morning. It was an absolute pleasure. Thanks again. Thank you very much. Thank you.